welcome back achievers to your easy achievers game podcast for the week of march 14th you saw the thumbnail it's gonna be a very interesting episode today i'm sure everyone will be civil about it i joke of course because everyone i've encountered on youtube so far has been pretty civil very nice about things but this is of course a divisive topic of what we're gonna be speaking about pretty political in nature it's actually been a while since we've talked straight political things on this show because it does come up in games but i would say it's kind of rare when you have to specifically get into politics or something like that this is more of a i guess cultural discussion more of a political one but some would argue those are almost interchangeable at this point uh which is an interesting thought but First off, I want to apologize because I do look, I mean, I'm looking in the camera, I look like kind of a mess, don't you think? I, I'm due for a haircut, got a bit too much hair on the top, and the beard, if you could call this one, which I wouldn't, looking scraggly. I literally have a neck beard, which I hate, I hate how it looks, Hor horrible, but sometimes I like growing it out just to get like a catch up, reminding me why I don't grow things out, I, I do like to get all this garbage off to make me look somewhat presentable but I, I i was going to wait cause next week we're going to be completely cut look nice and i'll be shaved so i'll look like a normal human instead of whatever this is in the camera right now but hope everyone's doing well today i hope no one's too effective from what's going on in the discourse right now i don't think most people who will be listening to the show would be as uh i think the overwhelming majority of people don't dig in to the depths and trenches like many are accused of of course the uh, vocal minority out there does make it seem like we're all bad but i know we're not so i hope this finds you well i hope everyone's doing okay out there and let's start the show for the week of course we start the show with not so rapid fire and as always timestamps below if you'd like to skip to the thumbnail story or just anything around let's get into it so i want to open the show with talking about akira toriyama for a little bit i did not get to talk about this last week obviously um and i know a lot of people have already kind of moved on from that um but we did kind of have a little bit of a a little bit of like a shared grieving with akira toriyama passing away i believe at 68 um someone that was incredibly important in my life as i found dragon ball z when i was very young it was very impressionable i loved it it's my entry point to anime which i assume a lot of people out there are, it, it was and i fell in love with it and it gave me a whole genre that i didn't know i loved and it introduced me to other things that i would end up loving and you know he would recapture a lot of that glory with of course continuing with dragon ball z and then going into Dragon Ball Super, and, and a lot of things that he has touched on. Just, I mean, you could say Akira Toriyama might be one of, if not the most influential influential anime creators of all time. I, I don't think that's a, like really disputed. He's, he's, he's up there. I mean, at least top five. You know, everyone always says the Mount Rushmore, right? You probably start with Akira Toriyama. He will be missed far too young at 68. Hopefully... Uh, hopefully everyone took some time thought about the man gave gave him the ample grieving time and maybe enjoy one of his works i think that's what he probably would want i of course never knew him but that's what i would want so hopefully you know watch watch one of his works that you enjoy and just spend some time remembering him because i will be moving on Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection is a disastrous release as many players are completely unable to play the game, citing server issues, and even not even getting a team on the opposing side of a match, uh, specifically in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, Aspire was behind this remaster, apparently, and uh, quite the shame in multiple avenues. Seems like no servers are ready for launch, as if the release date was a shocking thing for Aspire to be going through. Um, actually, let me double check and make sure. I don't know why, but for some reason, I feel like I should make sure Aspire is the one who worked on this collection. Apologies for the 
hang-ups. Let's go to the Steam page. Um, mostly negative. Yes, Aspire did re-release this. Uh, horrible reviews as it seems like it's pretty impossible to play the game, uh, which is unfortunate. I feel for everyone out there. Battlefront 1 uh, is apparently literally unplayable, and then 2 is if you know, you're know you lucky, there's, there's like a handful of servers apparently available for the game. There's only a handful of the big giant 64 player servers available, so it's pretty much useless um and aspire just continues to uh, kind of shock us with how bad they can mess these things up um unfortunately saber interactive is getting saved and this is a i think this is exemplary of the not so rapid fire because this this should have probably been in the main show saber interactive is getting saved by beacon interactive as they are being cut from the dying hydra that is embracer group the following numbers are from IGN's, as it seems, around 38 development projects are coming with the purchase, and over 3,000 staff members as well. The buyer, as mentioned before, is Beacon Interactive, a company um, that was that was a co-founder of Saber Interactive, Matthew Karch. This was originally valued at $247 million, but Drake and Schreier on Twitter clarifies, saying, quote, Embracer's official announcement of the deal is a little misleading. Saber is actually bringing along 4A Games, which is the game studio behind Metro, and Zen Studios, which is, of course, behind the pinball games, uh, through options specifically, which combined with liabilities amounts to a purchase price of around $500 million as Bloomberg reported last month, end quote. I believe we actually touched on that last week, uh, last month as well uh, on the show. Uh, hopefully memory is serving correctly there. Uh, but uh, great news. Anyone leaving Embracer is great news. That is a, if you listen to the show at all, that is a garbage company. I think that is one of the worst things that happened in the last decade. Uh, they have just come and just stumbled and destroyed a lot of meaningful value and uh they are horrible and i'm glad to see that people are getting away from this i won't bore anyone because i say this almost every week this is almost always a new new story about how they've completely messed everything up they overhedged by a lot of money and they found out Stella Blade's demo accidentally went live on the PSN and was quickly delisted, but many players were able to secure a download and played for it for a little while before Sony was able to stop the playing of that very demo. Of course, remotely, I believe they just turned it off if you were live. So if you reconnected, um, so if you were online, it would have taken away your ability to play the game. And then the moment you would reconnect online, it would also do that. So if you were offline, you could still play it for a little while, which I'm sure some people did. Uh... I don't really want to say too much of this because I I only saw you know the popular Twitter clips of showing how busty and and how uh, big her butt was and all these things on the videos and she's in incredibly attractive. They did well and there's of course the um, suit that is skin, so it's literally a pretty much naked woman without the uh, visible bits. If you understand my meaning, uh, but hilarious. I can't wait to play this game. Not for reasons you would think, although of course that does not. Uh, hurt the game by any means for me anyways small clarification on the episode i guess a dlc for persona 3 reload that was announced last week at xbox's partner showcase it will not be available to be bought separately and only included in the expansion pass atlas has stated so that's important to note i'm sure many people wanted to only buy the episode i just as the 35 dollar bundle included a lot of stuff that frankly isn't really necessary but uh, for you know people who are playing the game, but when you see, um, hopefully the the actual ex that the DLC will be worth the thirty five, but that's like half the price of the game. So is it really? Of course, Atlas just probably trying to make as much money off Persona as possible, uh, and this was kind of foreseen. I didn't think it would be available separately. Uh, that's just not how it's seen. You know, that's just doesn't that doesn't sound like an Atlas thing, but. These are the same people who made you rebuy the Persona 5 Royal at full price on PS5 for the PS4 port. So um, from uh, the PS5 port, I believe. Hopefully I got that right. But I, this is what I suspected. Apologies if anyone's disappointed out there. Um, I'm sure at some point it'll be on sale from between now and September. And if not, you know, there's nothing nothing wrong with it. And of course, this is a sorry. I should have colorified this. This is the answer which is an important part of the um, one of the releases of the Persona 
Persona 3, I believe it was Persona 3 Portable? It might have been Fess. <laughs> Unsure, but there you go. Deviation Games has been shut down and missed a deal with PlayStation before they can even ship a game. Founded by Jason Bloomdale and Dave Anthony, both Treyarch veterans who created the infamous Call of Duty Zombies mode, has been closed down. I believe they opened back in 2021. Hopefully that's correct. Uh, and this was incredibly sad to see. I mean, I it hurts my heart every, whenever you see a studio be closed before uh, they're even able to release anything or even get a chance on the marketplace. I'm curious, uh, you assume PlayStation walked away from the deal and probably killed whatever funding they had, but we of course don't know until uh, someone does some reporting and maybe we find out a little bit more, but it's unfortunate for all, of course, the lower management people, of course, the higher management will all get good jobs somewhere else because they are well known. I do feel for the everyman at the studio, of course. Now, of course, this is the part of the show where I talk about what? Have you been playing now? Of course, this is a question for you at home, and this is going to be a question I'll be answering. But remember, I want to hear what you have been playing as well. Let me know in the comments below. You can tweet at me at even thousand on Twitter, and we can have a discussion about what we've been playing. I've been playing Rebirth, like I said last week, and I've been loving Rebirth so far. I am playing this very meticulously. I'm, I'm going to say I, I'm taking my time. I'm going through each region doing everything moving on i said this last week but i you know I, I am having such a blast now i have seen a lot of people saying it's not really holding up when you do this it's not you know it, it becomes tired after a while i actually do see that i actually understand that even i would say uh and can empathize uh but i think just that whenever i get combat in this game i just it come like it resets me to back to 100 about how much i love the game i love uh figuring out the aptbs i love you know maximizing damage and st stack your gauge and how everything works just the straight up combat mechanics of the game is wonderful cannot recommend this game enough if you have any passing interest in final fantasy 7 remake i do implore anyone to at least play a remake before playing rebirth because it will make not make much sense if you do not play remake um, they did lie about saying you know oh just jump into this one i don't think you should just as a reiterate, make sure you play Remake before doing this one. Uh, be, and it will be much better that way. You'll just enjoy it better, too. It is not as good of a game, in my opinion, if you do not have the proper context. Um, and you, you could even watch like a you know short Let's Play of the original game. So you kind of have an understanding of what's going on in this one. But I don't know. I, I feel like um, even if you don't know the original game, I feel like you still would enjoy this. Uh, almost maybe a little more, but there'd be so much things you'd be confused. You should at least, maybe, maybe you just play Crisis Core and then this and then, I don't, unsure, but I love Rebirth. I'm loving my time with it. I am enjoying it. Uh, I really do think Square Enix found something special with this combat system. I want to see more of it. I, although I did love Final Fantasy 16's once you get into it, the beginning was very, um, boring because you were doing the same stuff over and over again. Until later on where you got a lot more icons in these things. And in this one, I don't know. It doesn't feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. Because there's so many different combinations of people you can use. And different abilities. Different weapons. Different builds. And all these things. I, I, and I just redid uh, my builds. I'm in chapter 12 now. So very close to the end of the game. I'm doing a little bit of cleanup around the world. And I am... I just redid, you know, my, my builds and my materia, picked up my favorite weapons and these things. Yeah. I can't I, I can't say enough. I'm loving loving this game. Can't, can't get enough of it. Hopefully you guys are enjoying something out there as well. Let me know. Um I have my eyes on a unicorn overload next actually. Um which I'm very excited about. Uh that looks like a how do I put this? Almost like an octopath traveler look to it and then of course uh you have the final fantasy tactics like gameplay mechanics ish um i have not personally played a final fantasy tactics game um since i've really been cognizant uh, i think i played it like when i was really little if i remember right but i can't quite remember but i played um but it, I, as far as i know it's a lot of like that or fire emblem being a more much more modern kind of thing to look at it's kind of like all that put together with like RPG aesthetics and these things, or, or, or sorry, mechanics as well put into there. And 
I just can't wait to get to it. I'm not getting to it yet because I will finish Rebirth before I touch that game. Um, so it will be happening soon, but uh, that, that's that's pretty much everything I have. But I have my eye on that game as I, I'm very, very close to finishing Rebirth. And I don't know, I might be a crazy person and just replay it immediately on hard to get the Platinum, uh, which I assume you have to do. Uh, because I, I'm just loving. I gotta be. I gotta be honest. I'm loving this game. I'm kind of. I, 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 I kind of addicted. If I'm being honest, I even took. I, I even did the thing where I took like a little break, because I was like, ah, I don't want to beat it yet, you know. So I like took like a day or two and played a played um a Destiny two, which you know regular viewers would know that that's just the game for me. I, I go back to all the time. Uh, but but yeah, I, I can't I can't recommend it enough. Uh, I, I don't want to change ter, turn this into the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth show. So let's move on. Rumor roundup. Uh, very light rumor roundup. Only one. I, I didn't see a lot of rumors going around. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Uh, and of course, that'll be in the corrections of the next episode. You know, you can always correct me on anything I do in the show. Or if I miss some notable news story you think I should have covered. I, I think I do a pretty good job with the news every week. But, you know. I'm not perfect. I miss things. Let me know in the, in the comments or tweet at me, of course. And that will be in the corrections of the next episode. So let's go into Rumor Roundup. It's sounding like a rumored multiplayer Spider-Man game called Sp Spider-Man The Great Web had a trailer detailing what one could have expected from the game. I call this rumored in the write-up. Um, I guess you should say leaked is a better way of putting that because, you know, it existed. It's not rumored. Uh, of course, it, of course, we know it existed for sure. The trailer seemed so experimental you know what i mean it didn't even feel like it was a game at any point if that makes sense like it just looked like this is what we envision but i don't think there was much in creating the game i imagine maybe i'm wrong uh hopefully i'm not sounding ignorant with this but with the trailer it did just kind of seem like a this is the, this is kind of proof of concept but not really made in the game because it just seemed like models running around it looked like just they literally had the spider-man game and then they like made models of different people and they just did what you could already do in the original game and just put you in slightly different environments you know clearly and polishing i don't think this was a trailer we were ever meant to see but i'm curious how we got it because i don't think it was i as far as i understand it was not in the original leaks i don't think anyone's like figured it you know found something that people missed or anything so where did this come from? I don't know. I don't know. Oh my god, here we go. Start of the show for the week. Welcome if you uh, went straight to this. Uh, it is a lengthy write-up, so please relax. I will try not to interrupt myself in the middle of this because I just kind of want to get through it and then give my impressions. As uh, everyone knows on the show, I want to give... Uh, you the news of the the situation and then we will discuss it at the end on what's going on um i have a million tabs open so I apologize if i'm you know looking at this and then moving over to this and and looking you know i, I might look a little strange but i i literally i mean what I have probably 10 1 2 3 4 probably 12 ish tabs open of like all these things i've gathered <laughs> from from uh this story and so uh bear with me um i think we're gonna have a good conversation well then, quite the tsunami of nonsense has happened since we last spoke, and boy will this make people uncomfortable, but the show reports on the news that we have as we have before, and hopefully this will be a fair representation of what is happening currently in our gaming sphere. Now let's begin. Sweet Baby Inc., a lesser known prior to these events writing consultancy company that focuses on a more DEI initiative, which stands for Diversity, e uh, Equity, and Inclusion, their official About Us reads as followed, so we can get a little more background on what's, who Sweet Baby Inc. is and what they're doing. Quote, Founded in 2018, Sweet Baby Inc. is a narrative development and consultation studio based in Montreal and working around the globe. Our mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video game industry. We aim to make games more engaging, more fun, more meaningful, and more inclusive for everyone. End quote. Now we will get back to Sweet Baby Inc., and, but let's move on over to the PC marketplace behemoth Steam, 
So a little background, Steam allows users to create lists of whatever they choose from some lists going on theming uh, to like categories of what games can be placed in to DRM issues to what we'll be talking about here, which is something very specific where they uh, someone curated a list of Sweet Baby Ink games that they have worked on as consultants. This list was made by a Brazilian Steam user by the name of Cabrutus. Now, seemingly sometime last week, employees at Sweet Baby Inc. found out about this page in an employee by the Twitter name of Chris Kindred, hopefully I pronounced that right, posted about it condemning the list and asking people to get the user banned. Quote, the Steam creator harassment group Sweet Baby Inc. Detected, which is the official name of the group, is led by this person, says the Twitter handle Cabrutus Rambo. Here's them trying to be slick so they don't get reported. Even with the discriminatory language filed off, the group itself still fails the code of conduct. So what he's referring here, um, I didn't even check if this was a man or woman. Actually, I apologize. Uh, let me click on the... I don't see... Oh, they go by they, I think. They don't have, like, pronouns listed. So I can't tell, unfortunately. Um, so we'll, we'll just say they from, go from now on. So what they do is they post a... So this is all deleted now. So, so uh, apologies for taking a second because I have to zoom in here because this is actually an archival link that I'm having, you know, Internet Archive to, like, get this. So they they link um, a Reddit page for the curator, uh, to the owner of one of, uh, of the creator page. So this is what the Reddit uh, comment says inside of what they're referencing. So, quote, creator's owner here. I've changed the approach to a more neutral one in order to shield myself from any bans reports that woke people could make. The purpose of the curator is still the same. Let people know about games involved with this company. Thanks for sharing. They then reply to that same message. Sup guys. Yeah, that's my curator. Uh, just wanting to make people aware of those try to corrupt our beloved hobby. Any suggestions and our questions are welcome. Thanks for sharing. I hope my Steam account doesn't get banned because of this curator. Um, and then there's an edit above below that. I'm not used to Reddit, and I came here because a friend who knows about my curator told me about it. I'm trying to change my name here. LOL is how he ends that. So as end quote for the curator instead of Reddit, we're going to be moving on to another Steam to then quote um, this person. So the Cabrutus is replying to an original message. Um, I won't be saying this person uh, name here just to be safe. I think um, I don't think we need to. So the uh, they are replying to in a message that says, quote, to avoid bans and other complications instead of awarding the reviews as inter quote tainted and inter quote. I will just put a generic message of sweet baby ink was consulted for this game and inter quote. So. Then Kabutus replies to this, just change it. Thanks for the suggestion, right? So, you know, listen, let's not get into that yet. Another user goes, if we can send the same message with less loaded words, then I think we should go with a safer alternative. The higher the chance of this group surviving, the better. Uh, Kabutus then replies, agreed. Thanks for the suggestion. So that is everything that is put in there. Then they, uh, they also put in the code of conduct that Steam uses um, and stating that this could... Uh, break the code of contents uh, in their view of what's going on. Now let's move back to Chris Kindred and what they are saying. So they are saying, quote, anyone, uh, sorry, so going back to that original thing, they say, anyway, report the fuck out of this group. Then, of course, saying the Sweet Baby Inc. detected group, that is what they are now stating, report the group for breaking the above uh, comments, which some of them is, it, it's intentionally vague, like all comment there. So I don't think I need to read it, but it, you, I, this is kind of like a gray area. It's untrue. It's unsure if they are uh, breaking Steam's code of conduct or not. You could look up and read it yourself. It's intentionally vague because Steam was going to make the final say. They're always intentionally vague, so we don't know. Um, I feel like it's <laughs> determining on what side are you on. You could read it any other way, uh, which is kind of the point of these things. So 
And then they end with, and report the creator since he loves his account so much. End quote. That is a reminder that is Chris Kindred completely ending the tweet there. So that is the end quote for that. So pretty much bringing up that uh, they found this. They then deleted it. Or sorry, they found this curator group. Clearly very angry. Made these tweets, three separate tweets calling out the group and calling out his account, all saying they should be banned. Note, this was deleted, I believe, about a day or two later. So pretty quickly, I imagine um, people got upset. That is why they deleted it. I do not know. Uh, it was deleted very quickly. I found this via a Reddit page that then archived the tweet. So I cannot go through and see what was said, and etc. Now, now that's out the way. Let's go back to the original write-up. Now, this seems to have created a somewhat strand, uh, strands, strands eyed effect, if you will, of epic proportions. Before calling out the account, the members of the page were roughly around the low to mid thousands, I believe. But now the page is sitting around 280,000 plus. So you definitely, I feel like, had a Streisand effect with uh, this situation. But let's get back uh, to the actual story. Enough of me editorializing. Now let's go over some of the reactions of notable figures in the gaming industry, as some are even dubbing this as, quote, Gamergate 2.0, end quote. Um, if you do not know what that is, um, I don't either. I, I'm joking, but um, it's always unclear what Gamergate is about. You can ask five people, you'll get eight different um what was Gamergate about? Some people won't even say because they're too afraid to try and even talk about it. So let's go back to uh, the show. So they're dubbing this Gamergate 2.0. So this may be a big deal for a while. So it is important to take the time for this story and get all sides as much as we can. I think we can all agree that it is important that we hear everyone out and then we can then um, spruce through everything and maybe find some sort of... Uh, conclusion or at least give our thoughts about it right because we we need to hear everyone out before we can actually give uh, or at least before i can give any news because i want you to hear the news first and then my interaction so let's get back into it so we'll start with rami ishmael which is a founder of a now closed studio vlambeer which was behind games like serious sam and ridiculous fishing has weighed in and he is cited many times by his fellow colleagues in this space so it is important to hear him out as he is cited multiple times from many of people discussing trends i guess you could say about this or at least specific issues as it terms to these die issues or uh inclusivity issues and that such i would say one of the bigger figures in there um but it is important uh that i i put this however rami has been known to go on twitter spats and has shown some instability so i do not say uh, and I don't say any of this to invalidate him. It's just included the necessary context moving forward. Also, the statement is heavily reduced when I'm about to read. So head over to Twitter if you want to read his entire thing. So I don't say any of that to invalidate what I'm about to read. I just think it's important to know that he has been known to, uh, and I've seen it with my own eyes, um, have pretty big um, Twitter rants, Twitter break i mean breakdowns is kind of the best way i could put it i don't mean that to be rude i think he would actually say that himself um i've seen him like delete things and apologize for things so although i think everything he's about to say is coherent and well i do think that's an important to note it will also be giving an important note later on about someone else quote so the gamer gate x Dev Grifter is back claiming shit about forced diversity leading to funding. And also, I don't know who's he talking about. I, I gotta be honest. Maybe it's who we're going to be quote quoting later. I'm not really sure. Um, again, Gamergate's thrown around so, mo so much it barely has meaning, in my opinion. But I don't know. So I'll I'm going to start over. Quote, so the Gamergate ex-Dev Grifter is back claiming shit about forced diversity leading to funding. And let me tell you, not even once in my life have I worked on or with any title that had an easier timing getting funded because it was different, diverse, inclusive, or equitable. Yes, games get made with external money. This has been the case since publishers and investors were a thing. And let me tell you something about big money people. They don't give a shit about anything but money. 
That's their job. They're supposed to do their job well. That means most unexpected hits are games that are funded one of three ways. An experienced dev making something weird, Hades, Baldur's Gate. A publisher with financial space to make a big swing, in Nier Automata. A team that can sell fun, Minecraft, Lethal Company. Core audience want to spend once, get years of updates, and preferably at super high fidelity and semi-realistic styles with no bugs. It's millions in investments for a tough ground that will buy into when it's discounted. It doesn't work anymore, and that's okay. But the fact that the corporations are then trying something else, different audiences, repeatable income, and all that stuff isn't because some secret cabal. It's literally economical, or sorry, economically more sensible to try live service until you go bankrupt or go super rich than it is to make triple A. Anyway, that's all. Short version. ESG, DEI, and diversity hasn't, or sorry, haven't made games worse. Hyper capitalism, shareholder culture, and mismanagement. Is what make games shit now. Until that's fixed, expect more and more bullshit as we go, as we go. Because as Triple A collapses, free to play games as a service is doing fine. End quote. Uh, lot to go over. We'll we'll go about that later. Now, another thread was made by a veteran that used to work with Bungie as a legal adjutant for their entertainment branch. Now, you might be asking, why am I bringing any of these people up? This, in my opinion, at least, seems to be the ones being pushed up. Um, I found these multiple ways, one, my own page, two, th through just searching around and like looking up the terms and doing research. So I'm not picking these people randomly. Hopefully it doesn't seem that way. I am, I am, or yeah, yeah, I am trying to pick notable examples that are coming out from this, right? So I'm, I'm not trying to pick and choose. I think everything I'm about to do is pretty fair with what's going on with this. So... Let's go back over. A third was made by a veteran that used to work with Bungie as a legal adjutant for their entertainment branch. Um, and this is a th uh, uh, what um, he says, quote, threat. 20 years in games, 17 in the C-suite. So very big name. So I am well situated to say these people blaming one consultancy for everything they don't like are again demonstrating they know nothing about the subject they purport to be discussing. They're sexist and racist. It never occurs to them that the reason nobody made games interquote for them and interquote was because nobody wanted to make those kinds of games nobody wants your money because no one wants you in their environment take it from someone who, most who, of whose job was figuring out ways to get rid of you trust and safety departments exist to get assholes out of gaming environments you end up creating them to get rid of assholes because adult humans don't want to spend their leisure time with assholes you're a gamer gator um fuck off you goddamn child <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I put that at part. Nobody wants your money. Go spend it on anime porn. I thought that was kind of funny, but uh, kind of uh, is ruining his own point by being so, um, uh, I mean, frankly, rude. Uh, he then goes on to approve of Rami's above statement and goes on to say some frankly very mean things that I'm not going to be reading all of here. <laughs> uh, so uh, it just pretty much degrades worse into there. So I don't think it's I need to comment further on that. I think the, the beginning part was the most salient and then he just kind of degrades from there. Uh, he did uh, as my example of people uh, taking Rami's words here. He did uh, bring up Rami's tweet that we read and said, as always, you know, he, he's right. So. You know, giving you some backing on why I'm bringing these people up. Paul Tassi, writer for Forbes, said this, every quote, every single dev or writer that speaks out about this is inevitably flooded with hundreds, thousands of replies and quote tweets attacking them, calling for them to be fired or even killed. So if I cannot take the inter quote, it's actually about scene creator targeted harassment and inter quote campaign seriously, end quote. This was in response to a verified Twitter user stating, quote, yes, Paul, it only takes one person to launch a harassment campaign and recruit other people to harass. That's what a harassment campaign is. That's what your buddy Chris did. That's what SBI doubled down on. And with the help of people like yourself, it's not difficult to understand, end quote. To give the other side of the argument, although there weren't many who officially stating the counter argument to the to this situation i found um a uh i found a couple so one is from sophia Nartwitz. i think i pronounced that correctly a somewhat controversial entity in the gaming space and has quite the inflammatory twitter page i used to follow her um uh, she is uh, very inflammatory i assume intentionally but i'm not sure i don't know her personally that's just what i garnered from the small time i followed her 
So she writes, one problem, or sorry, quote, one problem with gaming consulting groups like um, uh, SBI, of course, uh, uh, Sweet Baby Inc., is that while they may tote the importance of diversity and as evidenced by how they talk, tweet, they only come at these characters from one side of the spectrum and diversity is meaningless without diversity of the mind. The so-called, interquote, authentic characters in Intercorn are only vaguely authentic to one very specific type of experience. These people are just making the small, the, sorry, the same empty vessel under different colors. And it's boring as well as a belittlement of what diversity actually means. These groups are too politically entrenched to do the job well. I'd go so far as to say there's an underlining level of bigotry to what they do because they put various races, genders, and sexualities in a very stifling box. You're not valued. Sorry, you're not valid unless you share their specific beliefs. End quote. So let's go over to um, a Twitter user by the name of Grumps, who is actually Mark Kern, which is a it is a former team lead for the OG War, War, World of Warcraft. He states, "Quote: Every gaming press outlet and woke developer." are out there lying about Sweet Baby Inc. to try and make Gamergate 2 happen, while all YouTubers with a thousand times the reach are showing the truth for everyone to see. It was uh, Sweet Baby Inc. that were the harassers and racists. Normies are seeing the obvious lies now, end quote. <sighs> now, hopefully, I was fair about the presentation of all sides, and now I can give my perspective on all the events that has transpired from this quite insane week. All right, I'm back. Um, uh, where do we go from there? Um, let's start with the beginning, I guess. Uh, so I found, um, how do I even tackle this? I want to start with Rami, but I want to give my full thought. Let's give my like full thoughts and then let's go to each kind of, uh thought process going through this because i think this kind of paints an accurate picture of what people are experiencing from this and hopefully people have a better understanding of like what is going on from all of this so let's talk about the original problem to this so i don't think it's can be disputable a few things one i don't think this is being reported on fairly at all um i want to cite a pc gamer article and i I and before I go on either side here, I, I'm just trying to again be as fair as I can with this. You can only be so fair as a human, we all are uh, motivated by different things. But I don't think this is being clearly reported by many gaming outlets. I think that is uh, quite obvious. I found that actually reporting on this my, you know, myself doing all this reading. Uh, I want to bring up a PC Gamer article, um, and it's quite confusing on why why it's being kind of swept like this i don't know why because i do i there's not i don't in if this was much of a smaller deal there was there wasn't necessarily a bad guy in quotes there was someone who got upset and had a rash thing i don't really blame them for making the original tweet because they then deleted it rather quickly i think it's a shame that they tried to get this person banned but they did delete it hopefully um they had a conscious move of like you know maybe this person doesn't deserve to be banned for this they did just make a curator list but before we touch into that i want to go into how this is being reported on because i do think it's quite unfair and this is again why i bring up every almost every week now it feels like we have a genuine issue with games industry uh journalism because why why are we not being clear about what's going on? So let's go over to the PC Gamer. Uh, this is the headline, quote, a company called Sweet Baby has become the target of, uh, of anti-woke gamers because it offers consultancy work, an industry standard service that's been normal for years. And again, that already kind of sways you one way. Hopefully I didn't do that with what I just did. I don't think I did. But like, if you're going to re report on it, you, you got to like report and then do your editorializing later. That's fine say it's an editorial, but why are you reporting it this way? Um, and I'm not trying to go over, uh, attack the writer, uh, Harvey Randall. Hopefully, um, if you are seeing this, you don't see it that way. I'm just trying to critique and give like feedback. So they say a Kotaku report, which was written by, um, let me get the name. Um, Alyssa uh, Merchant, I believe is how you pronounce that, or Merchant. 
Um, so they reported on it before. You guys already know my problems with uh, Kotaku. I, I, I don't think they do good writing either. Uh, but we're, we're, we're doing the one sided reporting here. And let's re let's read some of this outright and then I'll give my feedback on this because I think this is actually important and why some people might have the knee jerk reaction of what we're seeing instead of actually reading and being like, Oh, it's, it's, it's like, it's not nearly as big a deal as we're making it. And Gamergate two, are we kidding? We, we, let's not, let's not call anything that, um, but, but let's, let's jump into this. So it reads as per a Kotaku report on the subject yesterday, a student group has picked up traction of a tune of around 70,000 members as of the time of writing that is now ballooned much more than that. It was much lower than that too, before, before any writing was done about it. It's called so we may be detected as if to warn discerning consumers of invasive DRM or something again, already kind of painting a picture here. Um, and I'm doing one more check. It does not say editorializing anywhere. This is a features page. Um, on side of PC Gamer, and I want to be clear here. I love PC Gamer. I, I, I actually use them a lot on the show. I cite them a lot. Um, good writers over there. I, I just, you know, I got to call it out when I see it. Um, instead of warning against potentially sketchy software, though, these concerned gamers have instead perceived a rising tide of ideology that's somehow taking over the industry by force. Kotaku senior editor spoke to a handful of members from their group's Discord who were primarily concerned about, quote, ideological worldviews that I believe have taken hold of the Western world media and gaming as a whole end quote and quote rate race and identity group quotas end quote. In other words, the kind of stuff that caused an entire fleet of gamers to construct their own anti woke sci-fi convention rally against, I, I, I'm, I'm skipping. I, I feel like I don't understand how that has anything to do with this. The situation grow in scale as some, as some sweet baby employees uh, frustrated at the idea of a curated list specifically made to avoid the, games they had worked on acknowledged a group on social media while the tweet has been removed one employee also discovered and shared the group's curated twitter account that is what i have a problem right there right so let me read that one more time the situation grew in scale as some sweet baby employees frustrated at the idea of a curated list specifically made to avoid games they had worked on acknowledged the group on social media while the tweet has been removed one employee had also discovered and shared the group's curated twitter account Achievers, why do you think I have a problem with that sentence? That is not accurately saying what happened. Why are we pretending like it didn't happen? I read you, read you the exact tweet. This person specifically said, go after this group, get them banned, and get the guy banned. Right? So why can't we include that in the article? I did not see that there. I don't believe that's in the Kotaku article either. I only read it once. Um, that That is the, the issue with this reporting. Hopefully, I'm shedding some light on this uh i just think it's fair we all start on the same knowledge point and then we discuss it right i don't blame anyone for being upset at the curator group if they don't know the obvious ramific the 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 starting point what we did right the employees seemingly kind of started this does that deserve the repercussions that they got no it does not um, as far as I, I've quick from quick glance, I'm not reading every single reply, but quick glance, uh, this is completely derated to the usual of what you can expect. Just complete gross, either name calling or, uh, I mean, as much as I believe the writer of the Kotaku piece got death, death threats that she, uh, even posted, uh, the email that she got, which was horrific. I think that is like, obviously like point out that that's that's horrible i would never i wouldn't worse that on anyone um especially if you're just writing about video games so i horrified to see things like that hopefully uh that is a incredible minority and they don't have to deal with that anymore that is horrifying to see i i feel very bad about kotaku um the the actual i keep saying editor-in-chief i think she's she's uh i apologize i'm messing this all up um she is the let me get her actual Senior editor, sorry. Oh my god, messed that all up. I apologize. She's the senior editor at Kotaku. Going back to um the original reporting, I I, I find it bad that we are taking this time to not accurately represent this. I think I've gone in that enough. Let's let's move back on to what's actually happening. So sweet baby being detected. I think we are as far as what I've seen on this one, I don't I don't really care that this person made this thing i think it's fair unless it's breaking some sort of seam rules 
should be fine to come up. I will say it is important to note that it started off much more inflammatory and then they took things away to, in to ensure they did didn't get banned. So although people who are saying it's just a curator group, um, I don't think that's being very fair to the other side either because it started off pretty inflammatory uh, and then it progressively got better with little things added or sorry, little things kind of replaced. Um, and the person went on record saying th all they wanted to do is people to know that they worked on it and to move away from it. Um, there's actually a thing going around from a Wired article that was read, written about this. Um, it just keeps exploding, uh, unfortunately. Uh, this is what people hear about in gaming. <laughs> Layoffs and this. Great. But the Wired article stated that, that the Brazilian uh, Steam user even admitted to not playing some of these games, like God of War Ragnarok and these things, because... Uh, which I don't know. People use that as a gotcha, but in, I, I assume what they did was they used it before and then didn't like the games prior, so he wanted to stay from anything that was touched. I don't know. Don't really know. He is in Brazil, which, as far as I understand, gaming prices are very, very high uh, because of tariffs and things. I assume they're using ways to get around that because I imagine um, there are ways of getting around it. I've heard of so maybe they're just doing that uh, to actually buy some of these games because it is incredibly expensive to be a gamer in uh brazil so maybe that has some sort something to do with this whole situation um to go back uh, uh, uh this is such a hard thing to kind of break down because um, what we have one side saying what was me you know they did kind of start it but also they are getting a disproportionate response but it also feels like the other side is as well. So it's kind of divulged into really no one learning anything. Uh, it, it feels like it's just people are just kind of complaining to complain. And we're all just doing, you know, this is the thing we're mad at for this week. And then we're going to move on to something else next week, it, whether it be, uh, I don't know, microtransactions are more expensive in Fortnite or something. I, I don't know. But to, to get it back to the actual story, I f find it disheartening that we're treating each other this way it's pretty gross um i know we i find this this specific kind of group very quickly points out like oh you know look at all these horrible things uh and it's a lot of the time it's a reaction to a reaction that doesn't necessarily exist hopefully that is not what's happening here. I don't think it is. It feels actually like there is something that people are upset about. I think a lot of it is being blown up proportion on both sides. Um, let's start with uh, the actual Steam Curate user. So the person said quite wild things, saying like, oh, these games like they, they that were touched by Sweet B are like suddenly tainted. As far as I understand, the way this consultancy work is they are just consulted. They are asked about these things. They get paid a lot of money to to consult their writing. Uh, so when you sit down and hear, you know, you pretty much give them, um, I believe your script. And then they go through and say like, Hey, you know, you didn't write X person that well. So let's add some sort of things. A lot of people are bringing up that they're probably just a DAI uh, consultancy. And I even called them that in the write up because I think that's true. Uh, I don't know why that would be a bad thing. Uh, a lot of DEI uh, is like paid for for a lot of you know a lot, and a lot of things. I think Hollywood does that too, uh, as far as I understand, with a lot of their movies. So I don't know why they would be afraid to be called that because that seems like they 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 changed. Because as far as I understand, they used to be called that and they changed it. Uh, they changed any words from that, um, which is a shame. I don't see why you would hide the fact that you're a DIA consultancy. <laughs> That's, you know, that, that I think that has value. Um, and I'm not here to try and expose my beliefs or anything. If this if the, if the market decides this is necessary, go ahead. I assume this exists to like head your bets to maybe like protect yourself. Be like, oh, no, you know, X thing happened is like, oh, no, no, we we hired a consultancy. So like we, you know, we, we had like an extra green light on top of this or, or something or maybe they're just being safe. There is some troubling things said by one of their CEOs one time. Um, I, I will quickly bring up. I didn't want to include this in the story because I don't know. 
maybe I should, maybe, maybe retroactively, I, I probably, or sorry, in hindsight, maybe I should have. Um, so I got this um, in the wildest place, that park place, which is about like Disney mm. World and stuff. I don't know why they wrote about it. I guess they write about video games and all this stuff too, but that park place, I remember I've went to before when I was planning like a Disney trip or something. So it's pretty, pretty strange, but they posted this. Um, they posted this on March 13th. Uh, so yesterday as of recording. Uh, and they and they talked they sorry they watched a video about the sweet baby ink ceo kim B baylor um and they have this whole interview up and it says it was an interview with inclusion fx that was supposed to youtube back in 2021 um and people found it of course after the after this fact because it kind of blew up um and then they she writes there's something very crucial that i want to be bringing she said, quote, I think I'm going to make sure. Let's sweet. Nope, nope, it's not here. Okay, so this is probably a couple things. That, again, this is being brought up because this kind of points the view of what kind of thinking is behind Sweet Baby Inc. So this is in 2019 during a presentation at the GDC. Belair revealed who she believed was standing in her way. She says, quote, I don't think it's pie in the sky thinking to go like, hey, or enter quote, hey, maybe we can invite white dudes to play as other people and experience different things through someone else's eyes. If they don't like it, we have to start thinking we're not losing, they're losing, and we're losing because we're going we're going to let them stand in our way of progress and innovation. At the same presentation, she also revealed the tactic she employs in order to take over the industry. Quote, if you're creative working in AAA, which I did for many years, put the stuff up Put this stuff up to your higher ups. If they don't see the value in what you're asking for, when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a copy with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Because they have to consider, I say that out loud as a joke, but it's actually very, very true. Because if you start to consider the people who are who are player and audience facing and you have to deal with mitigating harm and keeping the sentiment around their game and their project positive, there's like a genuine value that you can impress upon them both ethically and financially. You could say this is important. It's also a valid decision to have because if you're working with a thin narrative budget and it, and you work in AAA, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised or dismayed by the amount of money that marketing can give you. Uh, she also made it abundantly clear, quote, uh, that she wants to take over the industry, quote, none of what we're doing is about ticking boxes or about a veneer of wokeness. We actually uh, have to care about making this stuff. There's a lot of pretty strange things in that, but um, I didn't talk about everything that being credited. So uh, over at Moby Games, they have the they have multiple credits. Let's start reading them. Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, Alan Wake 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Battle Shapers, The Crew Motor Fest, Goodbye Volcano High, Shadow Gambit, The Crew's Crew, uh, Kingdom 80s, God of War, Ragnarok, Lost Your Marbles, Sable, Dungeons, and Dragons, Dark Alliance. So a lot of people are bringing up like, oh, they ruined Suicide Squad. That doesn't even make sense. Uh, the, the writing was the least of, the, of that game's problems. Uh, but uh, that that is important to bring up everything they have worked on. And of course, if you go over to the Steam Creator, um, you I think you see also upcoming games that are not out yet uh, that they have attached to the little curated list. If you, for some reason, like care and you want to go see that, you can. Um, and then, of course, they have their website and blah, blah, blah. Going back to breaking all of this down. Um, I think, uh, as many things do, we've just delved into pretty much the epitome of just name calling each other, not really moving any discussion around. I've not really seen anyone say anything cogent. I've, I've heard a few things that made sense. So let's actually go back to, um, Remy Ishmael. He says, where is that quote I had? Uh, Oh, this actually resonates. Core audience wants to spend once, get years of updates, preferably at super high fidelity and semi-realistic styles with no bucks. It's millions of investments for a traffic out they'll buy it when it's discounted. It doesn't work anymore, and that's okay. But the fact, but the fact that the corporations are then trying something else, something uh, different, repeatable income, and all that stuff isn't because some secret cabal. It's literally economic more stable to try and life service until you go bankrupt. I actually feel a lot about what he's saying there. I do think we can delve a little deeper into this conversation and actually find something interesting versus what, like what Sweet Baby Inc. is discussing. I think it's it was very cogently said. Um, I read this somewhere. I don't think I, I put it in, but 
uh, is pretty much like it, it, this is like one thing that we can attribute all of the problems to. And it does kind of feel that way that we're pretending like this one company just ruined like all these games or something. Uh, all the games credited are great uh, other than Suicide Squad and Suicide Squad is was a joke from beginning to end in its writing it had nothing to do with like the actual characters, although I, 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 no, never mind. It's not important to to the conversation. Uh, but it it seems strange that we're like pretending like they have like that much power in this. I don't think they do. I think uh, they have a very small thing to do with any of these games listed, and they're probably paid a lot of money to probably not, frankly, do that much. Um, that's just my opinion. I'd love to be proven wrong because uh, every instance that was brought up that they like. <laughs> they, they they keep saying like no we didn't do that or that or that so like eh, what do you do so i imagine they are paid they probably got a sweet gig of like oh we're writing consultants and you know you pay us to make sure uh everything's on the up and up narratively in these things uh in terms of a more diverse group uh and they look at you know i imagine this is uh relatively easy and they're getting paid a lot of money to do a relatively easy job of just pr pretty much making sure like everything is kosher and then they move on to something else. Right. Uh, it doesn't, I, I do, th I feel for, uh, of, of course the writer of Kotaku and these things for having all these bad things happen to him. I just, I find it, I don't know. Why didn't we report on this fairly at all? Uh, PC gamer. I, again, I, I like all these sites I'm reading these things on. It's just, why couldn't we just take the time to, accurately say how it happened i mean the, the crux of all this starts with the original tweet and that's what exploded all this i guarantee you no one knew about this beforehand i think it was like seven thousand or something before any of this happened and then that one tweet exploded and it started like a little mini explosions into it like it did a big explosion and people calling this gamergate too like it like we're like it's a movie or something uh, which is just so it's it's just so silly and and we have inflammatory people like the uh, adjunct earlier the 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 interim adjunct for earlier saying all these things saying gross things to each other like man, it, it's it's a shame that we've kind of can't really have good conversations about much of anything in this industry as it kind of just degrades into this name calling or saying ouch when you started it or oh no you know f feigning some sort of I don't want to say victim because that's not what i'm trying to get at here but you know kind of faming this kind of oh you know woe is me even though you know you, you got if you're gonna punch it you, you gotta see you know i don't blame anyone for coming at me i say things on this show all the time that's pretty you know inflammatory i don't blame anyone working in bracer or, or higher up not liking me for things i'm saying i you know i say hor harsh things i don't blame anyone at Kotaku for not liking me either i say you know i say rough thoughts rough stuff about them all the time so um I don't blame them. I would take it personally too. Uh, I'm not. I'm not very good with separating the the attacks on my work uh, from personal attacks, which I'm sure you know. That's kind of how humans are, uh, and I, and and that's maybe something we should all work towards uh, to to be a little better at. I, I maybe I'm the pot calling the kettle black because I find myself in that situation as well. But I don't. I like to think I would handle it better than all this. Uh, we, I, it's almost like we need to have this kind of agreed upon like convention or something and, and really talk these things out. Or and, and I think the games industry is hurt because or at least hurting because we don't have a person to go to to like hear things out from or like have um have like a a, a like center stage or something to, to really like hear out both sides or, or these things. Because if I go over to, you know, I, and I love a lot of these places, kind of funny. I love, but if I go to kind of funny, if I go to IGN, if I go to GameSpot, if I go to um, PC gamer, if I go to games, Shop, if I go to any of these places, it's all the same thing. And then if I go to Reddit, if I go to all these little, you know, c communities inside of these things, all these people who are mad, I'll get the other side and, you know, m both sides probably, uh, what is it? The, um, the famous adage of, uh, um, there's, there's one side, there's three sides to every story. There's the one person's side, the other person's side, and the actual truth, right? You're, you're always going to get some sort of mess when you do things like this, but 
I think we are hurting from a lack of um, diversity of thought. I think actually, I believe it was Sophia Narwitz that said that in this. So many quotes. I, I'm, I'm missing who I'm talking about. But I think Sophia actually put it well earlier that we are lacking in diversity of thought. And I've said this a lot. It seems like we all kind of agree. And I say we. Um, it just seems like we all kind of agree on a thing. And then we say, we say, yay, we agree. And then we kind of move on. And if someone doesn't agree, we get upset. And maybe that's what causes these little explosions every now and then. Cause it's like a powder keg that people can't handle or something. I'm not really sure, but I think we, I think we are lacking a sort of soapbox to hear everyone out on or something that nature. Cause Twitter kind of has devolved to, one person saying one thing and then someone else gets attacked for a set opinion and then it divulges into like oh he started it and then you know you kind of cry wolf when you know you kind of started this whole situation and hopefully we can all learn from this again i don't think to to put a kind of ball on everything sweet baby ink i don't think it's done anything wrong uh if the market dictates they should exist and so be it i don't i don't necessarily care i don't care what they've worked on I love a lot of those games on there. Uh, Alan Wake 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2. Who knows how much impact, if any, they had on any of those games. I would argue they probably didn't. I don't know. But uh, I assume they, they you know, do that to hedge bets, get some opinions. Uh, you know, maybe diversity of thought. I don't know. Uh, but it's funny how it, it kind of jumps to Spider-Man. Uh, Alan Wake 2, Suicide Squad, and then Battle Shapers. Good, goodbye, Volcano High. Interesting how that works out. I'll end it with saying make sure to give everyone a benefit of the doubt. And I think we're, again, having a having the gaming industry journalist problem that we do. Make sure you're doing your due diligence out there. Um, again, I wouldn't blame anyone for being upset at the curating list and thinking that they were like this sick group that like is like hating on them. The curation list, you can't write anything in there. So it literally just says... Game, 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 and it says each game is Sweet Baby Ink, and it says not recommend it, not recommend it. Now, did it start from a place of more vitriolic? Sure, I, I probably guarantee it because you see the screenshots, and he tuned it to make sure he didn't get banned in these things. But I don't think it warranted the response. I don't blame Chris Kindred for being upset. I would have been too. Uh, I think they went way too far with trying to ban that specific user. I, that's way, way too far. And I think they might have realized that and deleted it. Who knows? I don't know uh, Chris Kindred, and they wouldn't come on my show, so I, I can't get their side, but I can only guess. And Hopefully we all learn something from this, and we can use what we learned here to move on. And, and don't call this Gamergate 2, for God's sakes. No one knows what Gamergate 1 was even about. We damn sure don't know what Gamer 8 2 is going to, you know, no one's going to know what this was about either. We're all going to forget about this in probably a week and a half. I will say, though, let's move on from Gamer Gate. Can we? Like, all together? That's, like, one thing I want to know. Because, again, no one knows what it's about anymore. If I ask three people, I'll get five different versions of that, of what happened. It's just kind of used as this nebulous, gross thing that happened. And it's like a call sign to, like, get someone out of a conversation. I, I just hope we move on from that. Because it doesn't seem like it's helped anyone. It doesn't seem like it's helping anyone. It doesn't seem like it uh, was real. It, I mean, it doesn't seem like it harmed anyone that, that much either, especially for us to still talk about it. I would love to just move on. And used what we learned from that situation, if we did learn anything, in the future. I, as I say every episode, too, if there's something you don't enjoy about what I just said or don't like, you don't agree with, that's what the comments are for. That's what my Twitter page is for. You let me know, of course, with uh, etiquette and uh, personality. Let's all go at this with an even playing field. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you're thinking. Be nice to each other. Be good. Give you know, kiss each other on the lips. Whoa. And let's be civil. 
I don't like what I'm seeing on Twitter these days. It seems like we're forgetting that there's people on the other on the side. I don't blame people for seeing something disgusting and saying something disgusting in return, but it seems like we're starting at an 11 when we should be meeting everyone at a five to ensure that we are being calm. I am overly nice on Twitter because I understand where people are coming from. Uh, Colts, Colts Eastwood, I think is his name, is a perfect example. I, I had a discussion. Uh, I retweeted one of his tweets clarifying something that he had was saying about Starfield, right? Um, and he retweeted me kind of, you know, talking shit about me. I mean, that's fine. Uh, or at least making fun of what I tweeted. And talking shit is, is strong. He was making fun of what I tweeted. You know what I did? Just, I was just nice. I was just nice to him. Invited him on my show. He would never come. But I invited him on the show. We can have a discussion about what it was. So, you know, a lot of people have hollow words. So we must see through that. I hate when we're like, oh, oh, you know, gamers are gross. And it's like the guy with 80 numbers in his name and the anime profile. Like, why do we care about what he thinks? Block, move on. If it's like really affecting you that deeply. I feel like we are denigrating ourselves by trying to claim that these people have any power these gross people have power these anime profiles these people with a million numbers in their names the throwaways and all these things like that they don't have power move on and let's keep the conversation going but let's let's keep it going that's what's important that's how we grow and we're gonna get better right i think we can all agree on that i'll end this by I think I said I've, I'll end this four times already. Sorry, sorry, Chief. But we're in a good groove here, I think. I'll end this by saying, take a little bit to think about what happened this week about this specific subject. Think about how we're being too rough on each other. I saw a lot of people being like, oh, this is because of the election. Everyone's getting antsed up or something. I'm like, that's not, that's nothing to do with this, I don't think. I don't think people are getting ready to be madder or something in a year or prepping their Twitter profile or something. Let's just remember we're all people out there. Let's not try and push beliefs. Let's have conversations and maybe we can come to some sort of compromise with each other about things that happen like this. I don't know. Hopefully I showed both sides of this argument, gave you my point of view coherently and something that uh, everyone can enjoy out there. Let's finish out the show with date updates. Epic Games' free titles for uh, until March 21st are as followed, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, and The Bridge. I think it's very good. Let's remind you, all you have to do is have an Epic Games account, as far as I understand, um, and you're good. You just go and claim these whenever you want. So make sure you go grab that. Next up, PlayStation Extra Games for March. Let's read the catalog as we do every time. Same as Game Pass. When we get the new ones, we read them. So this is all playable by March 19th. Let's start with the extra and premium game catalog. NBA 2K24 Kobe Bryant edition for PS4 and PS5. Marvel's Midnight Sun for PS4, PS5. Um, Resident Evil 3 PS4, PS5. Lego DC Super Feelings PS4. M Mystic Pillars Remastered PS5. Blood Bowl 3 PS4, PS5. Super Neptuna RPG for PS4. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot PS5. And then this is the PlayStation Premium Classic Games for the week. Everything else was um, that could be gotten on Extra. This is only Premium. Uh, Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier for PS4, PS5. Cool Borders for PS4, PS5. I think I played this a lot on the PS1. It was a very fun game. God's Eater Burst, uh, playable on PS4 and PS5. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy for PS4. That's pretty good. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R doesn't have a listing for what game version that is i assume the ps4 and then it ends with we're happy to announce that starting april 1st my hero academia season will be available on sony pictures core to playstation plus premium slash deluxe members additionally we are pleased to share that select series from crunchyroll will be available to playstation plus premium deluxe via sony pictures core in the following additional regions starting march 13th Mexico, Spain, Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Italy, and France. PlayStation Plus Premium members have access to... Uh, okay, we can move on from that. That's just re-airing. You have access to like movies and stuff. Multiverse launches officially May 28th, and that was the news for the week. Let's talk about what's queued up. This is, of course, a question I ask you at home. What do you have queued up for the week? This could be a game, a TV show, a movie, a podcast, a book, a comic book, a 
audiobook, anything. You let me know in the comments below what do you have queued up for the week or tweet at me at you 9000 and I will be telling you what I have queued up right now. More Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Oh my god, it's shocking. Oh my god, it's so shocking. I'm, so, I'm doing that. It will not be the 22nd in, uh, from the next we record, so I will not have impressions of Rise of the Ronin and or um, Dragon's Dogma 2. <laughs> so I will not have anything probably new to report until next next week. So it will probably be more Rebirth, a little bit more Destiny on the side to get ready for a final shape. Very excited for Into the Light that was uh, revealed in the TWAB today, that that will be happening um, with a live stream very soon. You get three separate live streams detailing what, what's going to be happening. And then uh, I believe it launches April 9th, which will then last until final shape i believe with like new content almost every week or maybe every other week we'll know more probably in the live streams very very excited this was just as a reminder the event for destiny 2 that's supposed to get people back into the game to get ready for final shape so if you've been gone for a long time if the leaks are correct you'll probably very much enjoy what's going to be in <laughs> included into like excuse me i'm so sorry uh i did that into the microphone hopefully i didn't damage anyone's eardrums out there but that is what I have keto for this week. It was an hour of fun. It wasn't that so much fun <laughs> talking about this. Um, again, hopefully everyone can be uh, have rational conversations, can have uh, uh, can be nice to each other. And again, remember, humanity is on the other line. So let's not be too mean to each other, okay? And until next time, go Chief.